wage a war, you should try to understand your enemy. There aren't many of you. I can't think you'll win. Uh, aren't many? They may want us to believe that. I don't know what ransom you're asking, but I'll tell you now, you won't get it. I'm a serving officer. The Guardians are expected to take this sort of risk. If I'm killed, I'm killed. What's that? Editing, sir. Badly done. It starts again. I want you to understand that I volunteered for the G's. I didn't just want to swagger about in a uniform. I could have been a commissioner and done that. I believed, and I still do, that freedom has to be earned by restraint, that fairness has to be enforced because most people are greedy, and truth, because most people tell lies, and care, because most people are cruel, and a concern for the environment, because most people just want to shit and move on. I believe that we'd reached a time when people, not just in this country, but all over the world, had gone mad and actually had to be stopped from hurting themselves and each other. No, please. I particularly want you to hear this in view of your... Antipathy to the G's, it remains. Captain Bartley was an exceptional officer. Move on to the end, please. I liked him and I respected him. What you're trying to destroy isn't bad. Sentence was carried out without the prisoners being exposed to unnecessary fear. Death was instantaneous. We repeat that this man would be alive today if our terms of ransom had been met. All that we require is that Her Majesty the Queen should return to live in Great Britain. Could have been a bluff. The body's already been recovered, sir. Oh, blast, oh, blast. And that's only the second. Oh. Oxford is a city of bells. They do get on one's nerves. But why didn't you warn us you were coming? I thought I'd drop in. Well, it's a long way from Notting Hill. Are you staying? For a couple of days, if I may. Well, you can stay with Jenny, if that's your fancy. Really? <laughs> or I'll find you a room in the college. Now, the mood I'm in at the moment, I'd better stay here. When you two have finished deciding things for me, you're really very unhappy about something, aren't you? No. Gloomy is all. I am on the run from rather a bruising love affair. You? Why is that strange? Oh, dearest Chris, you're the gentlest man in the whole world. And I could very easily have been in love with you myself for a while. Which means you were? Which means I was, at Cambridge. But I refused to admit it, so luckily it never came to anything. Thank you. Because I knew then what I know now. In love, you do the bruising, because ultimately you can't bear to be loved. It makes you uncomfortable, probably because you think you don't deserve it. God preserve me from the perception of friends. Well, I'm glad you two are happy. Yes, we are, rather. We're even thinking of getting married. It's against my principles, but it would please Jenny's mother. <laughs> What's this? A uh, tape. I can see that. I thought you loathed music. What? Just because I'm turned... It. That'll teach me to change the subject. All I do is pick up a spool of tape from your desk and you both become as constipated as owls. It was less embarrassing talking about my love life. Well, it came through the post, as a matter of fact. It represents rather a moral problem. Well, if I had to kidnap someone, I'd choose someone important and preferably foreign. Security guards and all the important foreign embassies have already been doubled. Ah, oh, but I'd still try. You just imagine the feeling in the United States if their ambassador had been kidnapped, even a second secretary. And the only condition made for his release was that the Queen should return to England. I mean, it's such a simple demand to satisfy. All I'd have to do would be to resign, hold free elections. The Americans approve of elections and they approve of the Queen. Very hard to refuse them. You would refuse, however. Still, these kidnappers have gone for small fish. Uh, Chief Constable and the Captain of the Guardians, both in the Manchester area. Easier to catch, but clearly dispensable. In fact, we have dispensed with them. They are both dead. To imply we're dealing with a small group based on the Manchester No, area. no, no, I imply more than that. Even in the Manchester area, they could have uh, picked on some consul. No, I imply that they are not trained revolutionaries. They're not doctrinaire, they're amateurs. They don't attack the innocent. Innocent far more use to them than the guilty. Innocent people have been killed in Fulham. The bombing incident at the Guardian section station. Ah, well, you may have made my point for me. Now, I'd like you to consider that these two incidents are not connected. Brings me to the second factor. Now, whoever thought of this ransom idea is a very clever man. The return of Her Majesty to England. I mean, it's so reasonable, so peaceful, and to a, a large number of our most loyal citizens, so desirable. 
Of course, it'd mean the end of this government, the legal, non-violent end. Superb propaganda. Yeah. Well, they've sent tapes to the EBC, all the independent radio and television companies, all the dailies, Sundays, most of the important provincial papers and magazines. All quite useless, they're censored. A few journalists may know, but the public doesn't. But if this were an organised resistance, the public would know, because the resistance has a voice, Quamby speaking. He wiped out Quamby. But it's uh, odd, isn't it, that we never caught anybody alive from these incidents, did we? Have we? It's possible that a teenager, perhaps a couple, they were marginally involved. Well, where are they? A misunderstanding occurred. Oh, God! We repeat that this man would be alive today if our terms of ransom had been met. All that we require is that Her Majesty the Queen should return to live in Great Britain. I think I met the man. And the man they killed. He was that contradiction in terms, an idealistic G. My father liked him. I suppose they didn't know that when they kidnapped him. Where did you get the tape recorder? Oh, I borrowed it from the College Music Society. We've pulled in everyone whose name actually is Cornby for questioning, but I doubt if it'll do any good. Exceptions for children under 12. But couldn't they be questioned in their homes? We haven't time. Oh, look, now, we haven't time if we're going to antagonise every man and woman in the country bearing that name. Government rests on the consent of the governed, which is expressed by their lack of opposition. If we drive people into unnecessary opposition, we'll be out, so we should be. I don't think you and I should quarrel. No, I don't think we should. What are you saying? I was saying that I don't think these incidents are necessarily connected. I mean, these kidnappers don't appear to be in contact with your Cornby speaking, and I don't think they know how to make contact. This uh, bomb incident at Fulham, that may have no connection. The murder of the Home Secretary may have no connection, and all the rest, and if that's so... If that's so, it has clear advantages. There's no organisation. Ah, it's easier to penetrate an organisation than a hundred disconnected groups. I can understand an organisation. If it were communist or fascist group, I'd almost welcome it. Know thine enemy. But this disconnected, spontaneous... Do you realise what this means? That all over the country, all sorts of people, just ordinary people, hate us. And all we wanted was their good. There are bound to be malcontents, whatever one does. Oh, what a lovely word that is, malcontents. I went for a walk this morning, got up early, drove to Hampstead Heath. I felt like it. I'd hardly started before I was enclosed in a diamond of eight detectives. Oh, they didn't crowd me, you understand? Plenty of room to step out. One of them brought a dog, a Labrador. Yes, I know. The news agencies already have a picture. The Prime Minister, Sir Timothy Hobson, walking on Hampstead Heath with his dog. Mm -hmm. It'll appear tomorrow. Wasn't my dog. Well, the picture doesn't include detectives. I thought at the time it was rather a friendly dog. Oh, well, next. The sterilisation teams in Dorset have asked for a guard. All right. Police are overstretched. I'd suggest a detachment of guardians. All right. Next. The escape from the rehabilitation centre of Captain Thomas Weston, a known communist. The man responsible for the killing of my nephew. Yes, I remember. Missing, presumed dead, and all the I time... I have a report on the investigation so far. I'll read it. It's not satisfactory. No? Meanwhile, I've ordered that Plan A should be put into operation. Plan A? For dealing with maximum security detainee. Yes. Inconspicuous liquidation soonest. Kill them? Yes. Yeah, you're talking to me like a telegram, and all the time you've ordered, how dare you? The plan was the contingency plan already approved by government before you ever... Before I got... Look, I have some freedom of action! You rescind the bloody order, Jesus Christ! Maybe too late for some of them. I shall decide on what further action to take when I've read this report. Came through the post. I don't understand that. 
Uh, by mistake, we think. Hmm? Oh, it was addressed to the review. What review? Oh, really, Chris? The review. Paul's been editing it for the past five years. No, it hasn't come out at all for the last two. Oh, the review. I suppose they went through a list in the journalist handbook. Oh, hints for freelance writers, something they found in the public library. Now, obviously, they'll have sent copies to as many newspapers and magazines as they could, hoping someone had published. And <laughs> they must have thought the review was some kind of political monthly. They couldn't have known it was just poetry. Or that we went bust when your father abolished the Arts Council. He didn't abolish it. He just didn't oppose its abolition. Oh, love, we're not blaming you. I get so defensive about my father nowadays. Well, you might need defence. Anyway, you're a guest. You're a guest. There's no call to involve you in our problems. Uh, he did ask. Why is it a problem? I mean, you said yourself the review never was anything but a poetry magazine with a bit of lit crit, and anyway, it's dead. They've made a mistake, those kidnappers. It's none of your business. Except that it might be dangerous to have a tape like that about. I'd record something over it. Bach or something. Yes. They'd probably send tapes all over the place. Not that anyone will be able to publish because of the censorship. Well, that's rather the point, isn't it? I mean, it shouldn't be at all dangerous, just having a tape lying about. I didn't mean really dangerous. Oh, didn't you? And as you said, nobody's going to publish because of the censorship. But the review always did go out to a list of subscribers. I've still got the list. So it's a moral question, then? We haven't decided. The question's still open. Oh, Lord, I don't want to publish it. I'm not at all a hero. Oh, the tintinabulation that so musically wells, and the rhyming and the chiming of the bells, bells, bells. They've changed the practice day. How on earth am I going to concentrate on marking essays for the next it's sound? distracting. It's three miles away. Your sound travels up the valley. You like it, really. Bob phone today. What? Did you get a letter? God, any time your brother phones or writes is when he wants something. Even his Christmas cards. What do you mean, did I get a lettuce? There's a whole bed full of lettuces out there. They've gone to seed. They've only been out two weeks. Lettuces go to seed quickly in Warwickshire. He wants to bring someone to stay. Well, here? Well, there's a spare room. Well, who on earth will want... Is he bringing some kind of... Does he want to bring a girl here or something? <laughs> of course not. It's just some friend of his who's had a bad time or something and needs a rest. Somewhere quiet to rest. I definitely wrote letters on the list. You might have remembered. When's he arriving? Any time, Bob said. What do you mean, like now? Oh, God, you can't mean now. Not when there's no letters and I've got essays tomorrow. Well, I couldn't get here in time for dinner. Oh, God, you do mean now. We never have company. It'll make a change. Now, you love that brother of yours a bloody sight more than you do me. He can do anything he likes. It's only all natural. I get... You're my husband. I hardly ever see Bob, and I see you all the time. Incestuous beast. <laughs> you and your theories. Norman. No, no, I was having dinner. No, it's not important. Well, of course I want to know. I have to know. A third. Who and where? Salford, and that's not surprising. And... <laughs> oh, that's rich. <laughs> that's very rich. Yes, well, find out what you can. Brief me in the morning. I'll see the Prime Minister's informed. After dinner will do any. Flowers are very dangerous in a room at night. Carbon dioxide. You're really looking forward to this, aren't you? We never have visitors. Well, there'll be someone to uh, talk to while I'm at school, I suppose. Yes. I'm not blaming you, love. I don't mind solitude. I like it most of the time, but it will be nice to have someone to talk to. There's a car on the hill. Why, have you the dishes? Right. I'll go and meet them. Put him through, please. 
Uh, Norman. Yeah. Huh? Where and who? Yes. Well, that was to be expected, wasn't it? Now, listen. I want every house, every warehouse, every shop in the Northwest. Yes, yes, of course you are, yes. Well, you haven't told me yet who it was. What? Oh, oh yes, very rich. Oh, yes, a most amusing error. Another kidnapping, I'm afraid, Rodney. Taken from his hotel in Salford while visiting the prison on government business, the public hangman. I hope you'll be comfortable. I'm sure he will. Oh, perhaps you'd like to change into something a little less formal. I'm afraid we've had dinner, but No, I... he's not hungry. you better just get to bed. He's had an exhausting day. Oh, well, look, I'll just show you where Where's the... Where's the key to this door? We never lock doors. What's the point? I'm afraid even the bathroom door doesn't get locked. If it's closed, you just assume there's somebody in we there. We need a key. Andy, where's the key to this room? Oh, there's a box of them in the shed next to the weed killer. Bring it, will you, please? I'm sorry, Bar. I should have explained. Mr. Henryson gets very neurotic about his privacy. His work makes him neurotic. I've tried to explain. I don't believe you. We'll go down now. Yes, well, good night, Mr. Henderson. Henderson. Sweet dreams. Here you are. I'll take it in. I'll have it. But how will he go to the bathroom? He can have a pot under the bed. Because there's nowhere else. That's not an answer. We're not involved in, in whatever you're doing. We're nothing to do with it. You are now. God, your brother. I want you to understand me. Try to understand. Do you think I'd have brought Bar, brought both of you into this? Do you think I want to bring my own sister into danger? Except that there isn't any danger as long as you... Look, I'll try and explain. At this moment, in a small back room in Salford, there's a man with gloves on, typing letters. He's writing to newspapers, magazines, television, radio stations, telling them what we've done and why, and how easy it would be for the government to save that man's life. Now, when he's finished the letters, the typewriter goes to a yard where they crush abandoned cars. It's hidden in one of the cars, and that's the end of it. Irrecoverable. The letters then go to another man, also wearing gloves. He's on holiday in Scotland at the moment and he'll post the letters from the main post office in Edinburgh and then he'll just continue with his holiday, motoring tour of the Highlands. Now right now there's a search on in the Manchester area, maybe the whole of the North West. Perhaps this time the government might actually let on that something's up, you know, put out posters with have you seen this man. But this cottage isn't in the North West and nobody comes here and you're not political and nobody's seen this man. But I had to bring him here. Well, what do you want us to do? Keep him. How long? A week. We give him a week. <sighs> to bring the Queen back? It's not long. To say that they will publicly, that they will announce it. And then, if they don't? We take him away. And? Kill him. No. We make a tape, we get him to talk, we kill him while he's talking. He doesn't expect it, doesn't feel anything. Bar, he's the public hangman. He ought to understand about executions. He does it for a living. How dare you? Oh, it's not much to dare. We never have been censored. No, we never even had to submit an issue to the censorship. No, I don't know. I should simply say it's a Ignorance of the law is no defence. Mitigation. Anyway, you can't prove ignorance. You're an educated man, an academic. You know this thing's dynamite. It's all the more reason. Maybe if it would make any difference, but it won't. 
How big is your subscription list? 5,000? That's seven, actually. And a third of those will have moved since your last published. You can't reach enough people to make two pennies a difference. They're All opinion you... leaders. There aren't any opinion leaders nowadays. You'll ruin your own life and Jenny's. Chris, whose side are you on? I care for you. You're a friend. Oh, forget about all that. Do you think that should be published? Will you at least let me try to find out about it? I'll have to go. It'll be all right. Look, do you want me to phone up and say I've got a virus? No, behave normally. Do you? No, love. On you go. The list in your bag. We'll buy a newspaper, love, and don't forget the letters. We'll get the news on the radio. They won't say anything. Bye. There he goes. What are you doing? I'm taking his breakfast. I'll do it. No, you won't. He's a guest in my house, and I'll take his breakfast. If you think he's liable to knock me down and run away, you'd better wait at the foot of the stairs with a gun. I'm bringing your breakfast. You do look awful. I didn't sleep. There's a carrion crow comes and knocks on this window just after dawn. I should have warned you. The country people say that if a bird knocks on your window... It means a death in the house. I know. I'm sorry, I don't always think before I speak. You're not from this part of the country. No. No, we came here when my husband got a teaching job at the grammar school. It's about... Eight miles away, Chipping Camden. I went there myself. Please start. Do you really hang people? No. I tried to explain to your brother. He doesn't believe me. Then you're not oh, the... Yes, I am. What? I am, but I don't. Please don't confuse me. I don't hang people, but I am the public hangman. It's rather difficult to understand, I know. Do you think I could have a cup of coffee? My underpants aren't very clean, so I don't want to get out of bed while you're here. I'd have bought you a newspaper, but you'll have seen it. It's only yesterday's. They don't deliver this far out. There's a picture of the Prime Minister walking his dog on Hampstead Heath. Thank you. You see, nobody is hanged in Britain nowadays. But yes, maybe... it's announced and a date's set for it, but the execution is by injection. And it takes place 24 hours earlier. It's while they're asleep. And they're not expecting it like that because they think that I'm going to hang them. I don't even give it. A doctor gives it. I've never hanged anyone. I dress up for it, formally. I'm photographed arriving at the prison and leaving afterwards looking sad. It's all a show. Partly because the public likes it like that and partly because they couldn't do it the other way unless everyone believes in me. It's an important job, but it doesn't involve killing. Well, you better have a bath. I would like a bath. I'll get some of my husband's underwear and some casual clothes. I'll finish your breakfast. The bathroom's just along on the landing. I'll leave a clean towel. Have you gone mad? He's never hanged anybody. You believe that? Yes. And so do you. Doesn't make any difference anyway. But why not? The punishment for kidnapping is death. Punishment for assisting or conniving at a kidnapping is death. Death for me, death for you, death for Andy. <laughs> if he were the Archbishop of the British Amalgamated Churches, we still couldn't let him go. He's an out-of-work actor, hired by the Home Office. Never executed anybody in his life. He was chosen out of some book of photographs because he looked the part. He's in everywhere completely unimportant. An innocent person. Hmm? Ah, oh. <laughs> thank you. You're tired. Yes. Look, how did you know about this? A letter. Yes. Starts with a letter. Always the same demand. A week later, there's a tape saying that the man is dead. To whom is your letter addressed? 
whoever it was, has committed an offence by talking about it. And if he published it? Would commit an even graver offence, dangerously so. I couldn't protect him. No, these letters must be handed over to the police. You must persuade your friend to do so. Would it be so harmful to publish? Yes. You see, at the moment, these kidnappings appear to be confined to one group in one area. Look, do you remember those hijackings of planes that took place in the 60s and early 70s? Newspapers made a feast to them. Every new burst of publicity brought a fresh lot of hijackings. Exactly. Well, it seems such a reasonable demand. People all over the country will say, well, why shouldn't the Queen come back? In fact, she won't come back without a return to democracy, so the ransom demand cannot be met. It isn't reasonable at all. It's just an excuse for murder. Prosthetic? You can't have prosthetic. It's not a word. It is. All right, what's it mean? I don't have to know what it means. It's a word. Uh, it's medical, I think. Do you want a challenge? I wouldn't. You're in thin cahoots. You're ganging up on me. A challenge, then? No. I don't. 317 tripled. Good. Uh, cahoots? Well, hey, we're well, he's fled. Well, it's a joke. I don't often make them, so when I do, they're not very good. <laughs> it's your turn. There's no reply. Could be a wrong number. I've dialed twice already. I don't think I can make a word at all. It's all ease. Oh, yes, you can. Hey, let him play his own game. No, he's a guest. You don't What's seem to realise the danger we're in. Checking the Something's happened. Well, at least it's not the police answering. I mean, no answer at all can't be very dangerous. But if you found... Well, I want flippancy from you. I'll ask for it. Is not one of you taking this thing seriously? Hasn't it sunk in yet? The penalty for kid. <clears throat> yes, I'm taking it seriously. Thank you. Andy's right, Bob. It's just nobody. I've got to go I... back to Manchester. I had a good reason for being away for three days. After that, my absence will be noticed. See, this man was supposed to take over from me here. It was safer for him not to know where to come until he was actually ready to leave. Now I can't reach him. Well, what if the police have reached him? If we're to be serious. He doesn't know this place. He doesn't know my real name. But a driver knows the young lad who came He and the you. driver don't know each other. Well, not much to worry about. Do you understand that if he escapes, even if he doesn't want to give you away since you seem to be getting on so well together, the G's would have ways of making him talk. Painless, chemical ways, drugs. Do you understand that? Yes, she does. Right. Well, I've got to go to Manchester. Does that machine of yours take two? Reluctantly. Get me somewhere near Coventry. I'll hitch from there. Now, during the next two days, either someone will arrive to take charge or you'll be instructed. How do we know it's... Uh, His name um... will be Quarmby. Yeah. Right, during those two days, you keep him upstairs, locked up. I'll take the key myself, but you'll find some way of picking the lock to feed him. Now, Bar, you must keep him hidden if you value your lives and mine. If you want to play Monopoly or Scrabble, you can play on the bed. I really am very sorry. And if he published it, would commit an even graver offence. Dangerously so. I couldn't protect him. No, there. Yes, that's the bit. And where is he now? Gone back to Oxford. He's staying with the dean of one of the colleges. There's a newspaper at Oxford. Oxford Mail. It's a daily. They did receive copies of the second tape and letters and handed them over. They haven't had the third. Haven't had it or haven't had his aroma? Well, as far as we know, haven't had it. Oh, well, that's not so strange. They didn't have the first either. Now, the kidnappers seem to be treating the provincial press on a selective basis. Then where did young Hobson... Don't know yet. It's unlikely to be the Oxford Mail, though. Too many people would have seen it. Somewhere in Oxford. Inquiries are proceeding, as they say. There's one interesting little item for you, though. It's hard to know what to make of it. Yeah? Man living on his own in Manchester. Not old, but getting on, 56. Polish, Simon Grotowski. A tailor. Alteration, sponging, cleaning. Very reasonable. Has a coronary. Dies. A neighbour finds him. No doubt about the cause of death. No police record. Nothing suspicious of any sort. A common accident. Yes. Well, since there are no dependents, no relatives, no friends, the police have to look after things. Cart the body away, try to find someone to tell, examine the effects. He's wearing a ring. 
cheap piece of costume jewelry. Well, he is foreign. Don't make a meal of it. It's hollow. Gelatine capsule inside. Death pill. And in Manchester. I may go up tomorrow morning, if the Prime Minister can spare me. You want to be Sherlock Holmes. You're not built for it. Oh, I want some freedom of manoeuvre. Since the General died, <laughs> strange, I've been a very efficient subordinate all my life. Now it begins to look... Well, it's a problem to be faced. Are you staying the night? Not all night. My wife gets edgy. I stay a while. You're very ambitious? Ambitious and able. I deserve advancement. I really was no good, you see. I was no good at all. I hardly ever worked. Gardening seems to help. Watching things grow. I was married for three years. That didn't work either. She went to Australia with a tour of pyjama tops and never came back. People always used to say to me, what do you really want to do? And I didn't want to do anything. Theatres were all closed. There was 90% unemployment in the profession. I never liked TV. Well, I was never asked. Can you hear something? There's a tractor. It's not Tuesday. Oh, I'll look. No, you're not supposed to. I bet you. Oh, God. What is it? It's only as with two men on motorcycles. It's the policeman. Jeez. Guardians. I just suppose oh, you better... I must have seen them on the TV news. Oh, I'd better lock you in. And if they search your house? They'll find you. <laughs> oh, if I could warn Andy. Is it Newcomb? Don't lock the door. Go on down. Trust me. Tell them you're coming. I'm just coming. I'm upstairs. I'll come with you. I'm a guest. I'm staying here. The public hangman? Here's my identity card. I'm an actor. Hello, Ernest. Father, I don't think everybody has a natural right to university education. Just to the chance of it. More means worse, as they used to say. Mm. Do you realise the Soviet Union selects even more rigorously than we do? You don't want to talk about it, but you've got to talk about it. Oh, and as for discontent, well, there are no discontented undergraduates, because we don't select those who are likely to become so. And as for discontent among the dons, well, obviously there's none. One far prefers to teach able pupils. You can't do any good by publishing, and you'll put yourself in danger. What have you done with the tape? <laughs> Jenny's got it. Well, you could keep it locked up at least. Come. Good morning, sir. You are the dean? Yes. Sergeant Arnold, CID. I was told you might be able to help me. Good morning, Mr. Hobson. You know me? Of course, sir. We like to keep a friendly eye on members of your family, a discreet surveillance, particularly at the moment. Why at the moment, uh, particularly? Sir? Oh, well, at any moment, I suppose. Mr. Hobson's father is a valuable man, the most valuable in Britain, and consequently must be guarded. So those he values, sir, also become valuable. There aren't many of them, luckily. You didn't come here to tell the Dean I'm valuable. Oh, indeed, I know it. No, sir, a more mundane matter. I'm here to check up on undergraduate magazines and newspapers in regard to... Oscar says he'll come in with us. Oh, Jenny. Oh, oh, oh good. Good. Uh, uh, Jenny, Je uh, th this is a, a sergeant from the CID. He's inquiring about undergraduate periodicals. 
Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Sergeant. This is my fiance, Miss Crowsley, from the Ashmolean Museum. Pleased to meet you, Miss. I don't quite see why they should have sent you to me. We've no college magazine. Uh, except an annual journal of records, and that deals mainly with affairs of the boat club and the retirement of the mansible and that sort of thing. However, every university publication of any sort is registered at the proctor's office. Uh, if you'll allow me, I'll find someone to show you the way. No, that's all right, sir. I'll find my own way. Thank you for your help. Not at all. Oscar says he'll come in with us. Is the review registered with the Proctors? No, nope, it's nothing to do with the university. Who's Oscar? Oh. <laughs> he runs a private press. Limited editions of modern poetry on very good quality paper. It's a hand press. He works it himself. You've been fighting. Not really. Well, at least you could keep this locked up. A curiously mm. solitary man. We're working on it. You misunderstand me. It's not a reproach, it's a question. Ah, seen something like this twice before. A woman involved in the Fulham bomb affair, in her case it was an earring, and the two men who operated the planet radio. Instant death. This man was wearing it, as the others did, because he thought he might need it. Therefore, he got it from someone. Whom? How does one make contact with such a solitary man? Well, the Polish population of Manchester isn't all that large. We're working through them. The other three weren't Poles. They seem to have nothing in common. He was a tailor. Alterations, mending. He didn't make clothes. A list of clans? Oh, I don't think such people have. No, it. of course not. Bring it in, collect on Thursday, all right. Yet if I wish to contact such a solitary man, were well, there no garments left in the shop? Left? Unclaimed. Ready on Thursday, but when Thursday comes, he's dead. Return for your jacket in the shop. Oh, well, I think the police did make such a list so as to be able to. Yes, here it is. Please. Uh, That's too quite short. Bronson Chapman, Porter's Jackman, Cookbook. Quarmby, tweed jacket for leather patches into our hands, into our hands. Quarmby? It's the name the radio people use. It can't be a coincidence. The two men tried to kill themselves before they were shot. The children, as it turned out, knew nothing. They were called Higgs and Davison. But what they said was Quarmby speaking. Quarmby means something. It has to. Yeah, but if it's a false name... It won't be a false jacket. That jacket will talk to you, Major. It'll positively sing. Get it to the lab straight away. When you find its owner, he'll probably... Be wearing one of these. Make sure he doesn't get the chance to use it. And now I think I have an appointment with your area commander. I shall ask him to make you personally responsible that this time we catch someone alive. Hmm? And Ernest said... <laughs> no, 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 he did it. It was the other one. But then I said to Ernest, Ernest, what have you done to your uniform? <laughs> and he said, I, I keep falling off at the corners, <laughs> being as I'm not used to the billiard position. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even look at my identity card. <laughs> Hardly made a note of who I was. Still, I suppose we've got to check on all the houses in the Ernest. district. All over the country, every house. Well, it and... seems so. <laughs> Looking for you. Oh, looking for a prisoner. Someone locked up, tied up. Do you want to go now? Leave while you've got the chance? Well, you know what your brother said? They'd have it out of me. But if you just disappeared for a bit? Where? I'm all right here. I'm a guest. I don't need an identity card. But if I tried to book in at a hotel... Well, I... I haven't really got anybody, you see. I suppose we could hang on for a bit. Perhaps Bob won't come back. Very thorough. Not thorough enough. Every house was visited, every building. A vast deployment of manpower. I saw Michael Dace while you were in Manchester. Hmm. We're left with the assumption that they're hiding out somewhere. Unfortunately, it's summer. In Wales alone. Damn. Next time, I'll have blocks on every road into Wales. You assume a next time? Well, don't you? Well, Dace pointed out that your vast deployment of manpower neglected one rather elementary precaution. Yes. Well, if instead of merely looking for the prisoner, the G's had recorded the identity card number of every person interviewed, first, we should be sure we hadn't missed the man himself. Really? And second, we should know whom we had missed. Who might, in fact, be hiding out in some Welsh valley. Or in computer time alone. Well, we could have made computer time. As it is, there's been a tremendous effort. A puzzled population, absolutely nothing to show for it. Until next time. Oh, I'm not blaming you. I didn't think of it myself. Uh, 
Nothing came of your visit to Manchester. Something may have. I'd rather report when I'm sure. Oh, very well. Have an interesting conversation with the area commander. You having me watched? Should I be? Well, it's a matter of your own judgment. You reporting the gist of your conversation? Good God, what's that? I'm, I'm sorry, you, you were saying? What's what? I've never noticed. Is it an acquisition? I'm sorry, you should feel the need to record our conversation. Look here, I don't understand you. What is this bug? It, it's called a bug. I should have noticed it earlier, but what? the light, it's a clumsy job. What an extraordinary thing. Wait, you, you really didn't know? Then you don't know how long it's been here. Well, pull it out, no, get no, rid of it. No, it should be done professionally. I want to know how I got there. In my own living room? Oh, it's one of the hazards of power, Prime Minister. You must know that. Yes. What it does show, however, is that security at 10 Downing Street is not what it should be, never has been. I know you don't like the Guardian. No. I think we must do something to improve arrangements. Now, if I had my way... I don't like the G's. Very well, I won't push it. However, you'll remember the CID sergeant who's dealing with that kidnapping business. He's an able man, deserves advancement. I'd suggest we shift him into a position of general responsibility over your personal security in this flat. Bugging devices are specialities of his. Out of this nettle danger we pluck... Oh, stung myself. <laughs> it's your own fault. I told you to wear gloves. Let's have a look at you. Oh, Tom, you've weeded an aster. Well, it's only a dwarf aster. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, good afternoon. Yes, isn't it? Oh, I'm so glad I arrived safely. <laughs> I'm a friend of your brother's. Uh, my name's Quarmby. Radio electronics generally, I've always had a bent for it, if that's the right word. I'm entitled to have my solicitor present. Why, sir? I'm making no charge. I simply asked to hear the tape. And since you brought the equipment, I assume you intended to play it in any case. And if the Dean refuses? That would be an offence, refusing to assist me in my inquiries. What witnesses could you bring to his refusal? Well, you're here. And if I were simply to call out of that window, it would mean publicity, of course. Which would otherwise be avoided? Might be. Let him play it. Thank you, Miss Crossley. Sir? Yes. Vivaldi, a concerto in A minor for piccolo and orchestra. And on the other... Never mind. Tracks? You say it came by post? Yes. Can you think of any reason why anyone should send you unsolicited tape music by post? No. Did you keep the wrapping paper? No. I have one further question, sir, and I would like a truthful answer to it. Did you also recently receive unsolicited by post a letter? The Dean gets a lot of unsolicited letters, everyone does. I had one myself only this morning. Unique opportunity to purchase 50 frank and fearless educational studies of sophisticated sex play. May I have your permission to examine this letter? The Dean uh, destroys all unsolicited correspondence. So do I. Will you please allow the Dean to answer for himself? Unsolicited correspondence is destroyed. Thank you. I have no further inquiries for the moment. Well, aren't you going to thank me? Where did you find the Vivaldi? College Music Society. I told you to lock it up. Oh, go away, Chris. Go on, go away. I don't... I don't think either of us will want to see or hear from you again. What? Oh, we haven't been... We haven't been very cautious, I admit. We didn't realise the need for caution was so great in your father's England. Paul, be reasonable. Why? Reason it isn't in the case. Without fully knowing it, we have the chance to do something. Something brave. Stupid. Yes, but brave. Oh, we mightn't have taken it. We, we, we might have stopped the press. Printed, but not published. Something short of bravery. 
Because our bravery isn't really natural to us. We, we just want to get married and start a family. And bring it up. Yes. Yes, we'd probably have settled for that. You took any right to choose a wife. We never had a choice. That's what I resent. People ought to have a choice. I saved you. And clearly we're ungrateful. Oh, I, I shouldn't bother with this if I were you. Just bugger off and don't come back. You won't be welcome. Why? Why does he have to get packed suddenly now just because you've come back? There was no rush before. We had tea with him in the garden. Oh, peaceful, idyllic. So why does Because he have I to have get... stolen the car and its loss may already have been reported. Well, change the number plates. I've changed the bloody number plates. I have packed. Oh, I've made you some coffee. I'll take your things to the car. Oh, I think yeah. I can manage. I do wish Andy were back. I'd like to say goodbye to him. I think he should stay here. Dear Mrs. Newcomb, in cases like this, one can never keep the kidnapped victim in one place for too long. It's never done. Why not? <sighs> well, he likes being here. We like having him. I told you what happened when the search party came. It's the safest place. He could stay here until the Queen came back. I shouldn't mind. You would earn your keep in the garden. Oh, <laughs> Mrs. Newcomb. Well, you've got to keep him somewhere. You promised. Yes, Bar, we have promised. And you promised, I think, that you wouldn't talk about it. So let's talk about something else, shall we? <clears throat> That's a very fine tape recorder you have in the car. You promised. Be quiet, Bart. You gave me your word. Well, You're my brother. We on a family no. quarrel. Uh, shall we go into the other room? You stay where you are. He's not leaving. <laughs> You're not leaving this house. You wasn't bastard. He's not going. I'm sorry. You'd better know. He'd better not know, I think. They were going to kill you. They keep it a secret. They're very merciful. They don't want you to feel fear, so they'd have shot you by surprise while you're making a tape to send to the papers. It's rather like... Yes, very like. Except they promised me they wouldn't, not to you. Well, because I... Because you'd saved all our lives, mine and theirs, when the G's came. I wasn't bothered about that. And theirs. so they promised me they wouldn't do it to you. And since they owed you so much, I thought they'd keep their promise. Oh, well, he's not going because I'll fight for him. I suppose you wouldn't care to make the tape anyway. No, I? just go. Oh, very well. He may stay. Go and get your things. Oh, uh, please, will you put my stolen bicycle onto your stolen car? You are a very forceful woman. <laughs> I never realised it until now. Well, now you have a choice. You may phone the police. It won't bring your friend back. It will only mean that you and I, your brother and your husband, will soon be joining him in the happy hereafter. I'll leave you to think about that, if I may. <laughs> 